Hey guys, great to have you here today. And one of the most common questions I get is how can I get more lag in my golf swing, get more club head speed so I can really start driving it out there far, crush those irons, crush that driver. We know lag is a big key, key to that, a big piece to that. Well, the problem, the number one problem I see is people come in and they're always saying, I ask them what they're focusing on and they always say, I'm trying to hold this angle as long as I can. I just want to hold that angle all the way through contact. That way I can keep lag for as long as I can in the downswing. Well, if you do that, two really bad things are going to happen. Number one, we're going to block to the right. And number two, we're going to lose a ton of distance. We'll go over exactly what to do correctly and have a great drill for you in this video. Let's go and get started. Now, if you're joining us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I got tons of great videos coming out this year. I don't want you guys to miss out. And if you're not subscribed, you won't be notified. All right, so let's start with the first piece. I mentioned that you're gonna block the ball way out to the right. And the idea here is if I hold this angle all the way through contact, what's happening is my wrists aren't releasing. This club head never releases, and I just kind of hold on. Maybe I get a little bit of lag, maybe I get some forward shaft lean, but that ball is gonna be a weak block slice to the right. Let's go ahead and try it out on my flight scope here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to feel like I hold this as long as I can through the downswing. Let's see what happens. Oh man. I feel like I swung really hard. I actually feel like my club head speed may have been pretty decent. That ball went way to the right, a good 50 yards to the right of where I was trying to hit the golf ball. My club head speed was 109, so that's way down. I hit the ball solid right on the middle of the club face, but my carry distance was 245. My total distance was 278. So it's not like it's the worst thing in the world. I hit the ball solid, and a lot of you guys may be thinking, well, I held my lag. I got one out there pretty good, but you have a lot more in the bag. Now that one's probably out of bounds, so it's not gonna work very well. But what's the second piece there, which is why are we not gonna get speed if we do that, or as much speed as possible if we do that? And the reason is, you can only have as much lag as you can release. If I have tons and tons of lag, I got this awesome angle like the pros, and then from there, I don't ever release it, I'm not creating any club head speed in this club. I'm not really letting that shaft whip on through and accelerate. I'm just creating an angle and dragging it through there. I got a great drill that's gonna demonstrate this. I've taken a, just a foam ball. I have no idea where I even got this one from, but I just attached it onto a alignment stick. These are the kind of things you may have laying around your house. You don't have to have this exact setup, but the idea is really gonna work for you. So if you put this ball on the stick, and I imagine this is a swing, what I wanna focus in on here is in the very first part of the downswing, these bottom three fingers on my left hand. As I start down, I want to keep those fingers back. I don't want to be releasing those and releasing my wrist this way, which would be a cast motion. I want to be holding those back as I start the downswing. Now, as your left arm gets about parallel with the ground, that's what we call the max lag position. That's when you're going to have the most amount of lag in your swing. Pros are going to have about 65 degrees. If this was 90, just a direct 90 degree angle, it's gonna be a little sharper to make about a 65 degree angle. Now from there, you have to release this as hard as you can to what we call the straight line release position. I should be thinking, get rid of that lag as fast as possible. And if you do that, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have no problem getting a ton back here because you know you're gonna get rid of it in time. You're gonna hit the ball straighter, you're gonna have that nice draw and you're gonna have a lot of power. So the second piece there, I remember keeping my fingers back now I want to turn those fingers down so that this butt end of the club be pointing right toward my chest at this point. And if I do this correctly, this ball is going to fling off there and going to shoot out in front of me. If you have one of these at your house, try to see how far you can get that thing to release out in front of your, your body. So swing really hard, but wait very soft and then really turn it on as you're coming through contact. There we go. So I got that ball to release just in front of there. It shot off. That's exactly what I want to have happen. And you see, I wasn't holding back on that. If I did this incorrectly, let me show you one real quick. Let me grab my ball. So what's going to happen here is if I release this early, it's going to shoot off in the wrong direction. This time, instead of having those hands be soft, I'm going to let that thing fly really, really early. Now it went behind me. That would be the same thing as a cast. So that's how you know you're, you're not doing it correctly. I got to let that thing fly in front of the golf ball. So now let's take that same idea, soften the transition, keep those hands, those, those three fingers angled back. So I feel like this club's going this way. And then from there, I'm gonna hammer on it. I'm gonna feel like I turn that club back up to where the butt end of the club's facing my chest. So I'm letting that lag release absolutely as hard as I can. When I release that, notice how the face 
is going to turn on over also. I'm going to have that draw versus a big block to the right, like some of you guys may be having when you're trying to hold that angle. So let's give it a whirl. Club speed 109. Uh, distance was 245 and 278 after roll. Let's see what it is on this better swing. There we go, much better. Wasn't the best shot in the world, but I'll take it. Dead straight, a nice little draw like I wanted. Let's see if my club head speed, last one was 109. This one is 118, so I picked up about nine miles an hour. 118.4, my carry distance went up to 280. My total distance went up to 302. So I picked up speed, distance, and accuracy by letting that lag go as hard as I can through the ball. Now there's one piece of this that we didn't really go into a lot of detail in. We didn't talk a ton about the straight line release. Where does it happen? What should I feel? What should my body be doing? Well, I've got a great bonus video. That's one of the five pieces of the Top Speed Golf system. And I'm gonna play a preview for one of my best straight line release videos. So if you wanna pair that great lag we had up here with that great release, that's the next video I would recommend you guys watch. I'm gonna play a preview here in a second. Just click the card or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video and you'll start releasing like a pro. A common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons.